Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of RPM's Workbench. And today we're going to talk about bodies. No, not those bodies. These bodies. And how do you go from this to this? All that and more when we come back. The body that you decide to put on your car and race is another area we can find a bunch of hidden performance. Factors like body thickness, the thickness of the Lexan itself, whether it's 7, 10, 15, or whatever, makes a huge difference. The thickness of the paint, meaning how heavy the paint was laid down when whoever painted it, painted it. The actual style body that you pick out, whether you want to run a Corvette, a Nissan, a Ferrari, etc., makes a very big difference in the overall performance of your car as well as what makes the biggest difference is how you cut out and mount that body. Things like how high you mount the body, how low you can get the nose, how you cut out the wheel wells, how you cut out the back of the car, all go into the performance of the car once you get out onto the track. I'm going to let you in on a little secret my grandfather taught me. Every little bit helps. Whether you're looking for that extra tenth of a second that somebody appears to have on you on the track, or your cars always seem to have a problem like your pickup falling off, you're dropping a body pin or your whole body flies off, then take the time to go that extra mile and do all of the little things that add up to a big thing. Take the time to bulletproof, or as my father used to say, Roger proof your car and things will start to swing in your favor. So what body should you run? My personal favorites are the Host Corvette DP without the wing, the old Mad Jaguar XJR89, the newer Mad Jaguar XJR14, and sometimes the Thunderbolt XJR14. Now those are just the bodies that I run. There are plenty of others out there from Host, Ken Hunter, Steve Medanic, Viper, Wizard, etc. And they all offer plenty of bodies that will work well for racing. Once you pick out a body, you need to find a painter. That is, if you're not going to do it yourself. There are a multitude of great painters out there right now. Dave Grabowski of DG Designs, Peter Medeiros, Greg Williams, Lance Miles, Dave Lear, Scott Carlwood of Velo Champs, and sometimes myself. I've gotten bodies from all of them and they're all fantastic painters. All right, now it's time to start cutting. Okay, so what I'm gonna go over today is what I use and how I go about mounting the bodies, actually poking the holes in there so the body will sit how I want it to on the car. Then we'll talk about how I cut the body out and the strategies that go into why I cut things out the way I cut things out, like the rear of the body and the wheel wells. Then we'll move on to the tapes that I use and how I go about mounting the pins into the body. Then we'll finish up with a little trick that I use to help keep the body from falling off of the car. So we're back at the workbench and we're gonna start with a brand new body, uncut. This one was painted by Lance Miles. And we're going to cut the excess Lexan off and the reason I like to do this is so when I use my little handmade, homemade mounting jig, which is just a, a Viper chassis, I'm doing this so that when I go to poke the holes in the body, it's easier to see. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So I'll cut that extra plastic off and I'll come to the back here and I'll take a little bit off where the rear wheel wells will be. Trim the back off. I'll get into more of that as to why I do this a little bit later in the video. So this is what we'll end up with. Nothing around the body, no flash, and a little bit off the back. Now we'll take my, my homemade jig, which again is just a, a Viper chassis, some G Plus front wheels, an old rear axle, and G Plus front tires, over top to give myself a little bit more clearance when I'm mounting the body. So I'll take that, I'll take the body, I'll put them together. And what I want to do, so you can see back here, is get the chassis as far back into the body as possible. And this is done to improve handling. So once I have it positioned where I want it, I will squeeze the rear tires and the body hold everything together, make sure the nose is pushed in, or pushed down, excuse me. 
grab a few pins that I have off here to the side. Line everything up. Take the pin. And poke it through the side where the body tube is. And I'll repeat that for all four tubes. Making sure after I poke one pin that the chassis and body are still positioned the way that I want. Once you've done this a few times, lining up the pins and the tube becomes second nature. It, it really isn't as difficult as it sounds. Last one. And that's that. We have the body pinned and now it's ready to be cut out. And if we flip this over, we can see we have the chassis angled down nice towards the front of the body. So that once we're finished mounting the body, it's gonna have that nice profile with the front of the body angled down towards the front. So the next step for me is to tape up the inside of the body. And for that, I like to use parachute tape. I usually get mine from scale engineering, but there's other places you can get it from. As you can see, I have some laid out here along with the car I'm gonna to use to mount up with this body and the body that we started to cut out. So I'll take the tape and I'll line it up evenly over the holes as deep into the body as I can get. And by that I mean as far up into the top of the body. I'll make sure it's pressed down well and then I'll trim the tape. And I like to use the parachute tape because it's strong and it doesn't tear so that'll keep the pins from falling out. We're just going to rough trim it here as we have to trim the body some more later on. So I'll just make it even with the bottom of the chassis there. Now we'll do the other side. Again, lined up over both holes. Press it down and trim. Since we taped the inside of the body with the parachute tape, now we need to poke some holes through that tape so that we can get the pins in relatively easily. I'll just use the same type of pin that I used to poke the holes through the body to poke the holes through the tape, but I will run the pin back and forth through the tape at a few different angles to make sure that the hole gets worn in. Giggity. Get the other one. Make sure you don't poke your fingers like I just did there. Other side. Again, just work the hole at a few different angles to open it up so that the pin will go in easier. If you don't, when you go to insert the pin, the tape is going to start to pull away from the body. And if that happens, it could pull the paint away and then your nice looking body is ruined. Last one. Now we'll get the pins. I use pins from Quicker Engineering, uh, Richterosa. These are aluminum. Go ahead and carefully insert them into the body. Try to hold the tape down as you push the pin through. Even though you made the hole larger, you still don't want that tape to come up. And there we go, that's one down, three to go. Good, one side done. Other side. Last one. Last one's in, that's all good. Now that we got the pins in the body, we can put the body on the chassis that we want this car mounted to and mark the wheel wells for cutting. So we got the body in the chassis. 
just take a quick look around. I'd like to note how the tires are sitting in relation to the body. This is looking pretty good. It's hard to show on camera, but you can see the light between the tire and the body there. The other thing to note is how close the front tires are to the body and if they're rubbing. These have clearance and they're very, very close to the top of the body, which is what I want. Again, that's for not only handling, but to help scoop other cars up over top of your car if you happen to come across a wreck during a race. So that looks pretty good. So we're gonna take our trusty little Sharpie pen, just take note of where the tires is on the body and mark the outermost edges of them. The rear wheel well, the only thing I'm really worried about is the leading edge of the tire because I will clear the rear of the car, the rear of the body as high as I can in relation to the body so that the tire will not accidentally get cut by the sharp edge of the body and ruin a race axle or a tire or whatever. Tires are expensive, they're getting increasingly harder to get, so we need to take care of them. Let's mark up the other side now. Again, the leading edge of the rear tire, just mark that on the body. And then the outside edges of the front tire. And with the front tires, I will just finish the arc over the top. Just as a, a rough guideline for when I go to cut it out here in a second. And cut out the wheel wells. Now the next step for me is to rough cut the bottom of the body. And by that I mean the sides here and the front here. So again, that's a nice rough cut, ready to have the wheel wells dremeled out and move on from there. Now with the body roughly cut out, we're gonna take the dremel and clean it up. I'll generally use a, a low to medium RPM on the dremel to get these wheel wells cut out. I know I need to remove the Sharpie marks, they're almost gone. And I wanna keep the wheel well looking as clean as I can. So this one is looking pretty good for now. We'll move on to the rear of this side. And again, for the rear, I will clean all of this up right to the top of the body. So that is trimmed all the way to the top of the body. And I might take this out a little bit here because that is the part of the body that will usually cut the tire. All right, that's looking pretty good. The next thing I'll do is round this corner off in the back here. And again, that's so it doesn't come down and cut the tire as well. Taking as much off the back as I can, and this is what I mean by rounding the corner off. You don't want to have any sharp edge to cut the tire. Clean that up so you can see what it looks like. And there we go. That side has a nice flush edge to the top of the body and a rounded corner around the back to keep everything off of the rear tire so it does not get cut. Now I'll get the other side done and we'll move on into the video. Okay, so I finished trimming the wheel wells with the Dremel and now we're gonna put it on the car and see how they fit. I might have to take this on and off a couple of times just to get the wheel wells trimmed just right, especially on the front as those are usually the ones where I have to experiment with the fitting. 
So let's get this body on. Take a look. Driver side rear looks pretty good. Passenger side, passenger side rear went a little, a little bit much, but I'd rather take more off than have it be close. I mean, I know everybody wants their, their wheel wells to be as close to the tire as possible for, for looks, but let your personality come out in the body itself, not in the cut. The cut has one purpose, and that's for performance and not cutting your tires. Moving to the front, passenger side, front looks pretty good, except for the back here needs to be trimmed a little bit more. Driver side, the front of it needs to be trimmed a little bit more. So... I'll take the body off and hit it with the Dremel and be right back. Okay, I'm back. Let's take a look at how those wheel wells look now. Again, the rear looked good on the driver's side. The front wheel well has more clearance all the way around. Oops. Same thing with the passenger side. Front looks really good. The next thing we need to do is finish trimming the sides and the front of the body. So for that, we need to put it back on the track and see how close we are. Passenger side is looking pretty good actually. Maybe the front needs to be trimmed a little more. The overall front of the body is way too close and it'll make that nice scratching sound driving around the track if we don't trim that more. And the driver side definitely needs to have more trimmed off the front. So we'll take the scissors out and we'll finish trimming that. I usually like to leave the body on for this, but you have to be very careful not to cut your tires. Put that back on the track. And now we have just a small amount of clearance on the passenger side, and we still need a little bit more clearance on the driver side. Same thing goes for the driver side side. The passenger side is looking pretty good. So we'll take a little bit more off of the driver side. Now that should do it. Put it back on the test track. Looking pretty good on the side. And the front is looking very good. I'll just take that to a Dremel to clean it up a bit and we should be good to go. So in preparation for the final step, which is to put tape on the outside of the body to hold the pins on, I need to put my trademark number three decal on the body so that it's underneath the tape. So now that the decals are on, I can go ahead and cover the pins with some tape. And for that, I like to use racer's tape. It has really good adhesion, even after you start oiling the car and that oil starts to get onto the body, the, the tape won't fall off and you won't lose any pins. So we'll cover the side of the body. Making sure to cover both pins evenly. Press that on. and trim the excess. That's one side good to go. I'll just make sure the tape is pushed down. And we'll go to the other side. And now the pins are covered and they won't fall off during a race. So now that the body is completely mounted, it's time to show you a pro tip for keeping the body from coming off of the chassis itself. So if we take this car and we flip it over, you can see that the body is not flush up against the body tube. There's a little bit of a gap. 
That's not good because in a hard wreck, the body could come off or at least that pin could come out and it'll start dragging on the track, slowing your car down, making noise and generally just not being a good thing. So the way I fix that is I'll take the body off, take a look at it and you can see that the sides are bowed out away from the body itself, which was shown when the body was on the car and you can see the gap between the edge of the body and the body too. So what I do is I will take the body, put my thumb underneath where that rear pin is gonna go so that it doesn't scratch any paint that may be there. In this case, it's a clear window, so it's not that big a deal. And what you want to do is crease this edge of your body so that it pushes the side towards the inside of the body. So just put a little bit of pressure, start squeezing the edge and you'll see the side come in towards the center of the car. You wanna be careful with how much you do this because it is gonna lower the top of the body down closer to your, your chassis and tires. So you will need to check your clearance, especially at the rear once this is done. Now I'll put it back on the car and see how it looks. All right, it's looking better as far as the edge of the body being right up against the body tubes, and that looks good. And we'll look at the, the wheel wells, still plenty of clearance over the rear tires, which is what we want so that the tires don't get cut. All right, we're all done. That wasn't so bad, was it? How many bodies is my least favorite task in the hobby? But hopefully this video shows you that it's not that difficult and it just takes practice. I wouldn't start with your 50 to $100 custom painted body, of course, just throw some paint on one yourself and practice with that. Before long, you'll be a pro. If you liked or disliked this video or just have different ways of mounting a body, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to check out the description down below for links to all the tools used in this video and other useful information for slot cars. Remember to hit the subscribe and bell icons to be notified of future videos. And with that, keep it in the slot and I will see you all next time.